President Biden is on his way back home from France, but his trip was filled with some gaffes, including one the White House had to correct. Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey is in Paris tonight. Good evening from Paris, where President Biden made a big mistake today. He got the country the United States just committed another $225 million to Ukraine mixed up with Iraq. The idea that we become semi-isolationists now, which some are talking about, I mean, the idea we had to wait all those months just to get the money for Iraq and we, because we were waiting, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's not who we are. It's not who America is. A White House stenographer pointed out the president's mistake and corrected it in the official transcript already released. Here's the thing. This isn't the first time this has happened. It's hard to tell, but he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. And he has uh, become a bit of a fly around the world. The cemetery President Biden visited today is the one Trump skipped as president. The Atlantic magazine at the time claimed he also called the war dead their suckers and losers. Trump denies this, but it's a story Biden tells all the time, except today. You've criticized President Trump for not coming here on his trip. Uh, what message are you hoping to send to voters by being here right now? Any other questions? President Biden has to be back here in Western Europe midweek, so it's unclear why he and the First Lady flew back to Delaware tonight. Molly? Hmm. All right, Peter, great question. I wonder what's going on in Delaware. All right. Remember when Biden claimed that his uncle was eaten by cannibals? <laughs> he brought up his now famous uncle as Biden wrapped up his visit today. Don't want to make this personal, but every time I show up at a military site where veterans are buried, <laughs> it uh, brings back memories of hearing my grandfather and my mother talk about the loss of their son and brother in the South Pacific. And I think about my son, Bo, uh, after he in Iraq. And that claim that he made a few months ago is now being fact-checked by the New York Times. They called him Ambrose, uh, Brosie, they called him Bozy. My uncle Bozy was a hell of an athlete, they tell me, when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Oh, we got to get right to Joey on this one. Cannibals, Joey. This is the <laughs> yeah, it's, one of it's, many tales. I think the best part about that was immediately New Guinea came out with a statement like, this is, this is a racist and horrible thing to say about us. On top of that, his own Pentagon came out and said there's no record of that. And, and you really, you want to laugh at it, but if he's willing to go that far to make up a story about cannibals, to connect himself to World War II, then you just take a step back. Look at that soundbite right before that where he says every time he goes to a military graveyard to, to honor those that were, that were falling in the line of duty, he thinks about his son who spent a year in Iraq. The reason why he brings that up is he wants to convince people that his son was, was killed in combat. And he brings that up, and he toes that line. He's crossed that line before. His son tragically died from cancer. There's no proof that that was connected to anything. And I just, it really does bother me. It upsets me that he's willing to take the tragedies within his own family and bastardize them so that he can score some weird political points with certain demographics. Yeah, and on the subject of Ambrose Finnegan, fabulous name, his uncle who passed uh, during the war, Papua New Guinea's leader, as you mentioned, Joey, did come forward and defend when this story was told back in April. So this isn't the first time that the president has, has talked about his uncle. Uh, but Biden does love to tell stories when he's out there. Sometimes he tries to connect with whatever crowd he's talking in front of. So we cut them down to size. <laughs> this from the New York Times article. His suggestion that Mr. Finnegan was shot down and cannibalized in New Guinea is not supported by military <laughs> records or anthropologists. Mr. Finnegan would have been an unlikely victim <laughs> of cannibalism in New Guinea. Studies of cannibalism in the country have noted that victims tended to be from enemies from warring tribes as an act of revenge or deceased relatives as part of a mourning ritual. So 
rather creative tact that he's taking there <laughs> telling that particular story. Uh, but that's the New York Times calling him out. Yeah, well, and by the way, just to be clear here, the Pentagon has said, thank you, Joey. Uh, <laughs> yes, he was the passenger on an aircraft that crashed into the ocean on the north coast of New Guinea in May 1944. The engines on the aircraft failed. Three men, including Mr. Biden's uncle, lost in that. I'm going to go with the Pentagon's uh, version of events and yeah. not President Biden's version of events on this one. I'm also going to say, I don't understand why why the White House press officers, somebody in his advisors, tell, you know, he's been fact-checked over and over. The fire at his Delaware home, he goes on and talks about how, you know, they almost died and we almost lost our house and it was so horrific. It was a small kitchen fire and it has been repeatedly debunked. Fire officials in that town have said that is not what happened. Somebody needs to stop him from repeated, just, it just all this says is make him look bad. And I'm a little nervous about what he's going to say and do at the G7. I mean, sure. we, saw, we saw these gaffes during the D-Day uh, celebrations. That's one issue. But, but world leaders, the world stage, business of our country at the G7, I'm a little nervous, guys. And, and, and I think that raises a great point because, as Peter pointed out, the mix-up of the country names, which has also happened before. But, Charlie, I want to go ahead and bring you in here before we run out of time. Uh, the the storytelling and, <laughs> and the, the mix-ups. Yeah, anytime you have to bring in the anthropologists to a political story, <laughs> you're probably in, uh, in deep trouble. The greatest honor that he could do for Uncle Bozy would be to actually get the story right and tell the correct story. Those are the best. But I love it when the New York Times decides to weigh in and do a fact check of, of Joe Biden, and they say um, uh, these stories that Biden makes up, th these are a way to, for him to connect with voters, emphasize his middle-class Joe persona, and charm the audience. What I really would love is for the New York Times to, to go and find some member of the audience who is charmed by these stories, <laughs> or to go and find anyone other than the media itself who thinks that Joe Biden is somehow some middle-class Joe kind of guy. That is a lie that the, the Biden campaign has perpetrated and the media picks it up. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.